and now that we have this started, let's go ahead and add our new machine. We'll go ahead and add our new um, Linux system. And the first one we'll do is CentOS, which is uh, really the exact same uh, software as Red Hat Enterprise Linux Linux. It's just free, costs nothing, but you're not going to get any support. You have to pay for the support instead. And I always like putting in about a thousand twenty-four uh, megabytes. You can even type it over here as well. Click continue. And we're going to here create a virtual hard disk. Now this is just going to share some space on your actual hard drive, so we're not going to harm any of your files, any of your Windows or Mac or Linux files. We're going to create there and just accept the default and go to BDI and do dynamically allocated because we're going to ask for a pretty large disk, but we only want it to grow when it needs to. So we might ask for we're going to ask for a terabyte, but the file size is only going to be about five or ten. Byte. All right, now let's click create. And now we're about 80% of the way there. We're not going to click start yet. But we're going to check first. Let's go into system. And let's be sure that when we look at acceleration, that we're using the hardware virtualization. If that's not checked, going to take forever for your system to boot. If you want to enable hardware virtualization, you'll have to go into the, your BIOS. And there are plenty of videos on YouTube that can show you how to go into your BIOS and set the hardware virtualization. But you'll have to go into your BIOS to set that. And then you can decide on if you want to do multi multiprocessor system. It's up to you. have enabled PAE checked. And then uncheck floppy and then click on optical and move that down below the hard drive. Otherwise you'll keep booting off the optical drive and keep installing it over and over and over again. OK here. Good. Go to display and take it all the way up to 128 megabytes and that'll be fine okay. this is where we're going to tell VirtualBox where to find Linux uh, the, the Linux CD so we're going to click on empty and then go to the right click on this little silver icon here and then ch click choose virtual optical disk file. Now ahead of time I went ahead and downloaded the CentOS the Linux from CentOS.org from the CentOS.org website. And we're going to do version 7 here. Most of the versions will work exactly the same way and as of this taping version 7 is one of their later ones. But I have it here under documents. Go to CentOS and have to have the ISO, everything in the .ISO format. OK. Open. All right, so now we have the ISO selected. And this here, that is our sample, our virtual hard drive. And as you can see, the virtual size is one terabyte, but right now it's only six megabytes. After we finish installing, it'll be, it'll be about 5 gigabytes. OK. And I'll let you look at the other items on your own. The only, only other item that I'm usually concerned myself with is networking. And you've got the choice between natting or bridged. I always use natting. That's always the, the easier one. But bridged, what that will do is get an IP address 
from the same DHCP server that your laptop gets its IP address from. If you click Natting, it selects an it uh, selects a, a network address and uses your laptop, for example, as the DHCP server. But we'll go ahead and click NAT for now. OK. And now we're ready to boot and install our system. Move your mouse here to start. Click Start. That brings up another window. And we have the choice here to, OK, since, it, since it's going to take 50 well, it's going to take 53 seconds there. I want to move a little bit quickly. Here it says we've clicked the mouse inside of the virtual machine. And make sure you read this when you, when you install this. Now, the host key, as they describe, is the left uh, symbol key. And the left four loops over. Uh, but what happens is when we click in the window, the computer needs to know who does the mouse, who, who's in control of the mouse and the keyboard. Is it the guest machine or is it the host machine? What you're going to do is you're going to click your down arrow and you're going to click on, I'm sorry, you're going to click the up arrow to go to install CentOS 7. Uh, there's no need to, there's no need for us to test in the media. So let's go ahead and install CentOS 7. I'll hit enter and then it starts to boot now you get a couple messages up here at the top that you can delete uh, you have the auto capture keyboard option turned on and you have the virtual machine reports the guest OS does not support mouse pointer integration you need to capture the mouse by clicking in like we just did recently so we're going to always have to click in and then use that left four leaf clover key to exit out and get back to our Mac. So when we click in, we'll be on the guest system, that'll be Linux. We hit the left uh, host key or the left uh, clover key, four leaf clover, we'll be out um, and into the, into the Mac. Now, right now I'm in a view that get over here and I hit my left clover and then pull this out and pull this out and then click back in. Alright, and it's giving me the message again. And I, I, I'm going to click do not show this message again, but make sure you read that on your own. Now it's hard for me to work this way because I have to keep pressing the left clover key, going to the toolbar, and sliding down. And what I want to do is work in a full screen mode. So press the left clover key, go to go to view, and click on full screen mode. Now they show you. A a uh, shortcut. You could also click that left clover and F. And that'll go to full screen as well. You click full screen mode. And what that does is and here is showing you that it's going to switch to home screen mode, to full screen mode rather. And if we by hitting host F we'll get to full screen. Hit it again, it'll take us back to our regular size. And then if you hit host home, you can also get to this main menu bar that we have at the top. I'm going to click Do show again, switch. And now my screen is large enough that it appears to be taking up almost the entire screen. So it looks like my computer is a CentOS system. Now I had to scroll down a little bit to get to the continue button. I'm going to use the English keyboard and just click continue here on my uh, laptop. All right.
Now, CentOS is just starting to install, and but we actually it's waiting for us to provide some more information about the installation so it can begin. Now, we've got this one red area that says automatic partitioning selected. Let's go ahead and click that. Click on the hard drive, and then click on automatic configure partitioning. That's what we're going to do for now. We'll just keep it simple. And then in future topics, we'll show you how to make a more complex model. But we're just going to go with automatic uh, partitioning for now. Click done. And it said no disk selected. So I've got to go back here and click on this drive, which I thought I had a check mark, but now I click done. All right. So now it's saving and automatic partitioning selected and it's ready to install. And let's get some more software on here other than the minimal. The minimal won't be much and the graphics won't work. Let's click on putting in a server. Let's let's do KDE. KDE Plasma Workspace. But as you can see here, you've got several options. Very minimal with what's you know, have no graphical user interface, all the way up to putting a file server basic web server and getting to the different types of servers with graphical user interfaces like server GUI, GNOME, or KDE. Let's go over here to the right and for kicks we'll select some other applications that you might like. I like to get other KDE applications. I like to have email, chat, and video conferencing software. And I like to get a open office or LibreOffice so that I can have a word processing and spreadsheet and electronic presentation system. I'm happy with that. I'm going to click done. There's also an option there to select everything. So, all right. So it's checking dependencies. After it does a dependency check, which will be fine, we can go down here to the lower right and click begin installation. Now, here. Lower bar here, you can see that it's installing Linux. I'm going to go ahead and set some passwords, and we'll go ahead and first set the root password. And uh, if, you know, on my virtual machines, I keep my passwords very simple because they're not going to be on the internet. Um, there's not really any software uh, there I'm trying to protect. But of course, in real life, you want to make sure that your passwords are very strong, uppercase letters, lowercase letters. You want to make sure you have uh, uh, special characters underlined, ampersands, and I'm going to go ahead and create a user. And it's a good idea just for, for kicks, go ahead and make your user an administrator on your virtual machine. Again, in real life, if this was a, were an actual computer, you, that was going to be brought into production, you would not want to do that for the user. You would just want that for the system's administrators. So go ahead and click done. And it's going to continue to install. And we'll go ahead and let that install. And then we'll come back um, shortly and continue the video. Okay, so after the, the installation, there was a little in, initial additional work there that need, needed to be done. So it probably took about 20-25 minutes for mine to complete entirely. And so we're at a point now where we can reboot our system. So go ahead and click reboot. Everything's good, you'll have a window like this, and this is going to bring up a program called Grub. That's going to Grub2. That's going to boot our system. Grub allows you to make multiple boot partitions if you want. Like you could boot, you could have a Grub, you could have a boot Windows, Linux. Here's your username. Oops, 
secure, you can click on it, enter your password, and you sign in, and then your new delicious Sentinel system will be up and running. Again, if you want to go back to a smaller window, you'll press the Apple uh, the Apple F key or uh, in on a Windows machine would be the right control key. Right control F, right control F to go from full screen or get out of full screen, or right control home. So just make sure you know which key in VirtualBox. Make sure you know which key uh, releases you from the window. Which key is your home home key? Now the first time when you log in, it takes a little bit to install because it's actually building. Oh, I don't know if you heard that booting sound. So that's part of. It's actually that sound really is not part of CentOS. That's part of KDE that we installed that KDE package. Now KDE is loaded on top of Linux, on top of CentOS, and it runs on all versions of Linux, by the way. So if you have Debian, Ubuntu, Mandrake, Yellow Dog, KDE is available for all of those systems. So let's bring this up a little bit. But anyway, it takes a while that first time because it's got to take all the data about the desktop and build those windows for you and save them in files. So we'll pause here again and we'll come back in a minute. So what I've done is if I click on the window and scroll down, I've actually got the everything's all set to go. My app the applications are all set, but because of my resolution, my screen resolution is not allowing us to see the the packages below there. So I'm gonna do on Windows I would do right control F. On Mac I'm gonna do I'm going to do Apple F. So I can get back into regular mode and I'll go to the right here and scroll down some move my window over some and here we have our CentOS running using the KDE interface here, load mouse, and bring up our web browser. Now I'm using a Mac, but I've got a two button mouse, so I'm able to take advantage of both buttons. On if you just have the one button mouse, I believe you'll need to press the Apple key or the uh, control key to get that right. A web browser, CentOS, and see if we can go to a website. I'm not sure if we the right control key or the left mouse button. Give it a try. Yeah, if you find that your cursor, your, your cursor stuck in this window and you can't get it out, you have to hit that left Apple key or the right control key. And let's see if we can get to a website. Let's go to jordanteam.com. Not going to be to find that one. And let's try one more. Oh, that's probably because I'm going to go back down to the bottom again. I'll do the right control or the left mouse key. Uh, and by default, Something that Red Hat uh, CentOS does is the network is not connected by default. So you have to go ahead and click on that network, get it enabled, 
then this little red icon will eventually turn, uh, will eventually go off. Okay, we're back. A little bit of work. I had to actually reboot my system and then the network worked. I just selected LAN mode, that was fine. And now I'm able to get to different company websites. And inside my Linux system, my CentOS system. What other programs we have here? Let's go ahead and add that mode. We've got the um, file manager, the graphical file manager. The system also comes with the Firefox web browser. We've got Conqueror which is the one that's made by the KDE organization, all open source. And here's the system browser, by the way. And the, here's, I know there had been a Chrome version for Linux as well. So the, all right, so maybe let's go back here again. Let's try to work with. But the file manager uh, the file manager can help you navigate through your system. And as you can see that we've got uh, our our hard drive is uh, there's our terabyte hard drive and some other devices that it's stored in. Applications we got plenty to choose from. Office. And while that's booting up, well, let's look at uh, the computer. And then you can change system settings here as well. So that's all we'll talk about here. And and in my next video, I'll go ahead and get the Debian system set up. So you can see that one. With that one, I'll do GNOME instead of KDE, so you can get a different feel for, the, you know, get a different sense for look and feel. I know a lot of people prefer GNOME over KDE and vice versa, so just uh, whatever whatever works for you. Uh, but anyway, thanks for watching, and that's how you set up CentOS Linux inside of VirtualBox.